came into today, just one out, out of the lead, sitting in second place at the start of the day, just three weeks ago, had a brand new baby, wife and baby at home. So the only way they're coming here is if he gets in contention going into the final day, and with fish like that, it looks like somebody's got to call a travel agent. Coming sounds like so that's great. I hadn't seen him in eight or nine days. Yeah, he's probably changed a lot, but I, I get a picture every day. That's something that's helped me a lot this week. It's, it's hard to leave the house, even to go to the Bassmasters Classic. He was only about nine days old I think, when I left, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's doing good. But I get a picture and a little note every day on my phone, so it kind of keeps me grounded, keeps me going. Hopefully I'll get another one tomorrow, and then I get to see him in person. <laughs> Alan Clemens told me to tell you you have a baby powder. Yeah, hey, I, I, whatever it takes. That's, that's, that's whatever it takes. You said that the, the area had a lot of diversity. Have you figured out one element that seems to work better as far as the, the different types of habitat in there than the other at certain times of the day? But the fish are trying to spawn. They're usually going to spawn, spawn on some type of hard structure, just some root stumps, or there's a few logs and lay downs and things like that. Uh, some fish have come on patched in. Some are on open flats, so I think the fish are actually moving in. But, uh, 
I think they're actually spawning most of them closer to the stone. Are you using a different tactic in the morning than you're using in the afternoon? Yeah, I had to, I swapped back and forth today. I, I caught a couple on the spinnerbait, but they were fish I had seen yesterday. And I caught a couple of pretty good ones on the spinnerbait. That kind of died. It got real calm and real slow. It's kind of still a little bit of low light this morning. And then it got real calm and, and sunny and spinnerbait. I caught a couple of small keepers on it. I went to the little net bait salt lick, and that made a big difference for me. I caught some. Finished out my limit for one thing. I was able to settle down because I already had a couple of good quality fish. And I, I was able to find a couple more decent ones on bed that helped a lot. Um, probably took me two hours to get a limit. Yeah. So how many different baits produced your limit today? Caught fish on uh, the salt lick, spinner bait, uh, little bandit square bill. I caught my biggest fish on that. Uh, that was it today. Yesterday I was, uh, caught several on a baby pocket crawl, mm -hmm. punching the map. The spinner bait was a good one yesterday too. What's the spinner bait? What brand? It's a little war eagle. I think it's a 516 sandwich. I changed the blade on it to allow me to fish it a little bit slower, so it's sort of a small, lighter weight spinner bait with a, a little bit larger blade than what's stock. It allows me to slow it down when I get to, say, around the stump. I can really slow it down and, and trigger the strong. If you put on a smaller or larger? I put on a larger blade than what you put on. Will it a single bigger willow. It's a, it's a tandem, Colorado willow. Put a little bit larger blade yeah. on the back so I can slow slow it down a little bit. Does the color matter? No, just chartreuse and white. Yeah, <laughs> it's real basic. Yeah. Greg, sounds like you're uh, catching them early and culling up throughout the day. Um, any concerns about fish management? No, I, I feel like uh, from what I've been seeing, new fish are moving in. So when you remove a fish from a target and another one takes its place, that's kind of what I've been seeing. And that's why I said I was so encouraged this afternoon because I saw two big fish, you know, right there late. That told me some more, you know, hopefully another group of fish was coming in. Yeah, uh, it seems like the lock masters and the locks have been pretty good to you guys this week. If you get a good limit early, are you coming back to the ramp early? No, I think tomorrow's going to be a big day. I'm, I'll probably push it to the limit. I think it's going to take a big, you know, a heavy weight tomorrow to, to make the move. So um, I'll, I'll stay in there. I, I've got a good sense of timing. Make sure I make it back on time. So I'll, I'll give myself every last minute because the bite improves in the afternoon. So even if it's only three minutes, that's a lot of cast when you're fishing fast and aggressive. So, um, you know, one key bite is probably going to be the one that determines the winner and who finishes second or third or whatever. Yeah, I saw a few barges getting pushed up the river today. Um, no concerns there, like similar scenarios of the decline incident or what was happening at the Arkansas yeah, River. Yeah, I, I, I was one of the guys in the top 12 who got locked out of the Arkansas River. And my stance is that you know I'm committed to that area. I'm going to stay with the lock schedule. It's, it's something that very rarely happens. And uh, it sounds like they have communicated with the large operators. They do have priority. Most of the time, they're good about working with us, and especially a tournament of this caliber. I, I feel like they would probably work with us. All real slow, or are you swimming it? No, just uh, kind of like we do in Florida, just dead sticking it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I've been using uh, JJ's Magic, this little dip and dye, mm -hmm. garlic scent and dye on there. And I, I thought it was helping, which I always use it because I believe in it, but I, I thought it was helping. But I noticed the fish today when I dyed the bait. It was one that I was working on on bed. It really got, I caught it pretty quick right after I did that. So I think that's helping me on my plastics. I was doing that with the baby pocket crawl. What color? I dipped it in blue. The baby pocket that I was punching it was a black shadow. I dipped that one in, in the blue dye. And the watermelon red, I was dipping it in the sartre. The whole bait or just the tip? Just the tip. Just the ends of it. Just a little highlight. It's got a real strong garlic scent. Oh, Works yeah. great in Florida. I kind of feel like I'm fishing in Florida with exception to the stumps. Yeah. So. Works here too, I guess. The pocket that you were fishing, how are you? Are you just Texas rigging that and throwing it on bed? It was mostly uh, just punching those little shallow mats. Okay. So I'd use like a one ounce weight, uh, Jethro tungsten weight, and punching through those mats. And there's a little baby baby pocket crawl. It's got a little bit of action right mm -hmm. when it goes through. What, what size hook were you putting up? Uh, I had a four on in it, a four on straight shank. Comic absolute? Uh, what is that? Uh, one of the paycheck hooks. 
Okay. How deep is your boat sitting when you're catching these fish? Usually in about two and a half feet. And the fish are coming out two of... Two and a half, three. I mean, I can move back a little bit and be in four, mm -hmm. which is a good depth. Can yeah. you turn off your electronics when you're in that situation? Or yeah, I've got the electronics off. Yeah. As soon as I get in there, I cut those off. And it allows me to, to drift around and sort of blend with the territory, I guess. And again, you're the only one in there? Yeah, I'm the only guy. There was one other local boat was fishing the area when I got there this morning. They did move off when I got there, but because I had to lock, I don't know how long they had been fishing there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but after that, I, I had it all to myself. I, I feel like, you know, shallow water fishing is my strength. I learned to fish deep and I became a good offshore fisherman because I had to. But fishing shallow cover is, is my strength and, and power fishing, that's, that's what I like to do. And, uh, you know, more than that, I feel like I'm a strong fisherman in a pre-spawn and spawn phase, and that's, that's what we have going on right now. So I think I've been making adjustments well this week, and that's something I learned fishing on the Coosa River, the Alabama River, and Lake Martin allowed me to have the versatility to survive on the Elite Series and, and adjust here at the Classic. All right, guys, we just finished up day two of the 2012 Bassmasters Classic here on the Red River, and I am still in second place, which is actually a good place because I got one more day to fish tomorrow, and uh, I'm really confident in the area that I'm fishing. Um, the leaderboard changed a lot, you know, with the exception of my standings, I'm still right there in the hunt, and uh, one pound is not a lot right now. There's, there's a lot of good fish that are moving around in the shallows, and. I can very easily, you know, have a good day tomorrow and close this thing out. So I'm excited about tomorrow, but I'm tired. I've been doing a lot of media stuff all day. That's a good problem to have, and, and I'm uh, in real good shape to have a shot at winning the Bassmasters Classic. So I have no idea what the future holds for tomorrow, but, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and, and it's been an awesome experience already, but I really want to close the deal. I'm, I'm really focused on the area that I've got to fish and uh, I feel like it's the type of place that I could win the tournament if everything goes well. So I'm looking forward to getting out there in the morning.